Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to this revised version of day number four of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to 3D model a whiskey bottle. You'll learn how to create offset planes, how to use the loft feature, and how to create threads. To get started, we're going to draw four different closed profiles on four different planes. Then we'll use the loft command to connect all four closed profiles, which will create the overall shape of the whiskey bottle. First, I'll create a new component by selecting new component from the assemble dropdown list. Then I'll type out whiskey bottle for the component name before clicking the OK button. For the first profile, we'll sketch on the XY origin plane. I'm going to start out by activating the center rectangle from the sketch dropdown list. You'll find it nested under the rectangle flyout folder. Then I'll click on the bottom XY origin plane as that's where we want this first profile to be. After clicking on the origin plane, You'll see that Fusion 360 automatically reorients the plane, so we're looking directly at it. I'll click on the center origin and I'll drag out with my mouse cursor. We can now type out the desired dimensions of the rectangle. I'm going to type out 76 millimeters for the width. I'll then hit the tab key, which locks the dimension in place and switches the cursor to the other input field. I'll type out 63 millimeters for the height, followed by the tab key to lock this dimension in place. Just to clarify, by hitting the tab key, we're simply locking the dimensions in place so we don't accidentally change them or move them as we move our mouse cursor around. Now that both dimensions are filled out, I'll click to set the rectangle in place. We'll now want to add rounded corners to our rectangle. If you remember in the last tutorial, the quickest way to get to the sketch fillet command is by activating the sketch shortcuts box. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra to activate the shortcuts box. Then I'll type out fillet. Now it's important that you select the sketch fillet tool, which has the two dimensional symbol and not the 3D fillet tool. After the fillet command is activated, I'll click on each side of the corner lines. Then I'll type out seven millimeters for the fillet radius. Clicking the enter key on my keyboard will confirm the fillet results. At this point, I'll go ahead and stop the sketch by hitting the stop sketch button in the toolbar. We'll now create the second closed profile. In order to create a sketch above this one, we'll need to create a construction plane as we're not able to simply sketch out in space. I'll select the construct dropdown menu. Then I'll select the offset construction plane as it allows us to create a plane a specified distance away from the pre-existing planes. After activating the offset plane feature, you'll see that we have only one option, which is to select the plane or face that we want to offset from. In this scenario, I'll select the XY origin plane. After selecting a plane or face to offset from, you'll be prompted to type out the offset distance. I'll type out 114 millimeters for the offset distance. Then I'll confirm the results by clicking the OK button in the dialog box. Now that we have this offset construction plane, we can use it to draw another rectangle or the second closed profile shape. To activate the rectangle once again, I'll use the keyboard shortcut letter R as in Romeo. Then I'll select the construction plane as the plane to sketch on. Now you'll notice the keyboard shortcut activates the two point rectangle tool. So to switch to the center rectangle tool, 
I'll simply click the center rectangle option in the sketch palette. This rectangle will make a bit larger, so we have a nice tapered shape. I'm going to click on the center origin once again, and I'll drag out with my mouse cursor. This time, I'll type out 95 millimeters for the width. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place and to switch to the other dimension input field. Then, I'll type out 76 millimeters followed by the tab key. Once all the dimensions are in place, I'll click to set the rectangle in place. Once again, we'll activate the Sketch Fillet tool. I'll hit the Escape key to clear out any active commands. You can also access the Sketch Fillet tool by using the right-click Sketch menu. I'll right-click in the Canvas window, I'll select the Sketch Flyout folder, and then I'll select the Fillet command. I'll select all the lines that make up the corners of the rectangle. Then, for this fillet radius, I'll type out 12 millimeters, followed by hitting the Enter key on my keyboard to confirm the results. These first two closed profiles will make up the base of the bottle. We'll then want to create two more that we'll use to create the stem of the bottle before we use the loft command to join them all together. I'll create another offset plane by clicking the offset plane icon in the toolbar. This time, I'll go off the offset plane and the sketch that we just created. I'll punch in 38 millimeters for the distance, and I'll click the OK button in the offset plane dialog box. For the stem of the bottle, we'll want to create two different size circles. To quickly activate the circle command, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C as in Charlie. I'll then click on the construction plane that I just created. Now that the sketch has been activated and automatically reoriented, I'll click on the center origin point. As I drag my mouse cursor out, I'll type out 40 millimeters for the circle's diameter. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then, I'll click with my mouse to set the circle in place. I now want to create one last circle, which we'll use for the top of the stem. One time-saving trick in Fusion 360 is the fact that you can activate another modeling command, which will automatically close the current sketch you're in. Instead of hitting the Stop Sketch button in the toolbar, I'll simply click the Offset Plane button that's also in the toolbar. You'll notice that not only stops the active sketch, but it also activates the offset plane command. To create this plane, I'll click the construction plane that we just created. I'll make this one 89 millimeters away from the previous one. Then I'll click the OK button to confirm the results. Once again, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C as in Charlie to activate the center circle command. I'll select the offset construction plane that I just created, and I'll click on the center origin. As I drag my mouse cursor out, I'll type out a dimension of 30 millimeters, as I want the top of the stem to be a little bit smaller. Lastly, I'll hit the stop sketch button in the toolbar. I'll now click the home icon next to the view cube in the upper right hand corner to take a look at the model from the home position. If you remember in day number two, we created a beer bottle using the revolve tool. But our whiskey bottle is not a symmetrical cylinder shape. So we're going to use the loft tool to join together the four sketches that we just created. Because the loft tool creates a transitional shape between two or more sketches or planar surfaces. To activate the loft tool, I'll select the create dropdown list then I'll select the loft command. You'll notice the first section in the loft dialog box is prompting us to select our profiles. Now one important thing to note here is that the order we select our profiles does matter. We can select the closed profile shapes from top to bottom or from bottom to top, but we cannot select them in random order or it will create a really crazy twisted shape. 
I'll go ahead and select the four close profiles one by one, starting at the bottom and working my way to the top. Watch what happens as I select them. You'll notice it starts to join all of the sketches together to create a three-dimensional shape. However, if I look at this shape from a few different angles, I'm really not happy with the overall shape. Fortunately for us, the loft command lets us select guide rails, which we can then use to help define the curvature of the loft. You'll notice the second section of the loft dialog box is for the selection of guide rails. For now, I'll simply hit the cancel button to undo the loft command. Let's sketch out some guide rails and then we'll reactivate the loft command to finish off the model. To create the guide rails, I'm going to use a combination of the spline tool and the line tool. Now it's important to note that you can create guide rails with any of the sketch geometry tools. However, I'm going to use the spline tool as that will give me the most amount of freedom to really tweak the shape of the bottle. To make this guide rail work best, we're going to sketch it on the XZ origin plane, directly in the middle of the bottle. One thing we'll want to ensure with the guide rail is that it snaps into each of the four profiles. Otherwise, we'll get a very common error with the loft command that the guide rail isn't touching all the closed profiles. Now, in order to ensure that our guide rail does snap into each profile, I'm going to create some construction lines on each and every profile. As you're creating parametric models in Fusion 360, you'll often find yourself adding geometry or features later on that you didn't initially plan on. Fortunately for us, this isn't a problem as we can simply double click on features in the timeline to edit them. I'll start off by double clicking on the first sketch in the timeline. Then I'll activate the line command by selecting it from the toolbar. Next, before drawing a line out, I'm going to select the construction option in the sketch palette. The construction option will create dashed sketch geometry, which means that the sketch geometry is intended solely for reference purposes. Next, I'll click on the right side of the profile where the line snaps into place at its midpoint. To ensure the line is exactly at the midpoint, you'll want to click where the triangle midpoint constraint icon appears. Then I'll select the other side of the rectangle where it also snaps into the midpoint. We're now done with this one, so we can hit the stop sketch button in the toolbar. At this point, we'll want to do the same steps to the next three sketch profiles. I'll double click on the second sketch in the timeline. This time, I'll activate the line command by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima. Then, I'll turn the construction option on by selecting the button in the sketch palette. Once again, I'll click on the edge of the rectangle where the line snaps into place at the midpoint. Then, I'll simply click on the opposite side where the line snaps into place at its midpoint. I'll stop this sketch by selecting the Stop Sketch button in the toolbar. Then, I'll double click on the third sketch in the timeline below. First, I'll click and drag on the circle's dimension to move it out of the way. I'll then hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima. Then, I'll also activate the keyboard shortcut letter X as in Xavier to quickly activate the construction option. For this line, we can't snap it into a midpoint since our circle doesn't have one. However, we can use the center point of the circle. I'll click on the center of the circle, and then I'll click on the left edge of the circle where the line snaps into place. I'm also not going to worry about the right side of the circle, as we're going to eventually mirror the guide path after we create it on the left side of the model. For now, I'll hit the Stop Sketch button in the toolbar. Last but not least, I'll double click on the fourth sketch in the timeline below. I'm going to click and drag on the dimension to move it out of the way so we can see what we're doing. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima, then I'll also hit the keyboard shortcut letter X as in Xavier to quickly activate the construction option. 
I'll click on the center of the circle and then the left edge of the circle where the line snaps into place. Then I'll hit the stop sketch button in the toolbar. If I now hover my mouse cursor over the edge of these sketch profiles, you'll see a sketch point appears where the construction lines intersect the edges of the sketch profiles. This is why we created these construction lines and you'll see how they'll help in just a second. At this point, I'll activate the Fit Point Spline tool from the Sketch drop-down list, and it's located in the Spline Flyout folder. After activating the Spline tool, I'll click on the XZ Origin Plane as the plane to sketch on. Then, I'll click on the first closed profile in the lower left-hand corner, where it snaps into place. Next, I'll click on the second profile edge where the line snaps into place, and if you're having trouble seeing where you're clicking, you can always look at the model from a slight angle to ensure you're selecting the edge of the profile. After clicking on the third profile, I'll click the Enter key to place the spline. At this point, we can further define the shape of the whiskey bottle by moving around the spline handles. I'll simply click on the spline handle and I'll drag it around. And I'm just going to tweak the spline handle until I'm happy with the overall shape. Once I've got the spline in a shape that I like, I'll need to draw a straight line at the top to create the stem of the bottle. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima to activate the line tool. I'll select the first circle where the line snaps into place, and for the second endpoint of the line, I'll select the top circle where the line snaps into place. Then I'll hit the escape key to exit the line command. Now this is probably the most important step of the guide path and where a lot of viewers had problems with the initial tutorial, so be sure to pay close attention. Because we have a spline and a line as our guide path, we'll need to make sure they're connected. Otherwise, the loft tool will not think they're one continuous line, and it will give us an error message that the guide path is not continuous. First, I'm going to select the spline, which shows the spline points once again. Then, I'm going to click on the top spline point handle, and I'm going to drag that over until it snaps into place to the straight line. Again, this is super important. Your top spline handle must be snapped into place to the straight line. If your line snapped into place correctly, you should be able to drag it up and down the line. And once again, you can move this around until you're happy with the overall shape. Once we're happy with the overall shape of the guide path, we'll need to mirror the guide path to the other side so we can use both guide paths with the loft tool. To do so, I'll draw a line to be used as our center line. I'm going to activate the line tool in the toolbar, and then I'll activate the construction option. I'm going to click at the bottom of the bottle for the first point, and I'll click at the top of the bottle for the second end point. Next, I'll activate the mirror command from the sketch drop-down list. Then, I'll select the spline and the straight line as the objects to mirror. Next, we'll have to select the mirror line. We created our construction line as the mirror line, so I'll go ahead and select that. Then, I'll click the OK button to confirm the mirrored results. We're now ready to retry the loft command. I'll head to the Create drop-down list, and then I'll select the Loft command to activate it. I'll select the Home Position icon to take a look at our model from a perspective. Then, I'm going to once again select all four profiles from the bottom to the top. We can now select the guide rails that we set up. I'll first click on the plus symbol in the guide rail box. Then, I'll select the guide rail on the left-hand side. And I'll select the guide rail on the right-hand side. If I now move the model around, you'll see we have a much more defined shape. Everything looks correct, so I'll click the OK button to confirm the loft results. 
At this point, we'll finish off the bottle by adding a few more details before making the bottle hollow. If we look at our shape, we'll see that the bottom of the bottle is completely flat, which isn't realistic. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter F is in Foxtrot to activate the model fillet command. With the model fillet command active, I'll select the bottom of the bottle. Then I'll add a fillet of five millimeters, which adds a nice rounded edge to the bottom. Then I'll simply click the OK button to confirm the fillet results. Let's now create a stem at the top where we can add a thread. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C as in Charlie to activate the center circle command. Then I'll click on the top surface of the bottle as the sketch plane. I'm going to click on the center origin and drag out with my mouse. For this circle's dimension, I'll make the diameter 27 millimeters and I'll click to set the circle in place. Then I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter E to activate the extrude command. I'll select the circle as the profile to extrude. I'm going to type out 12 millimeters for the extrude distance and before clicking the OK button, I'll make sure that the operation is set to join. By setting the operation to join, this extrude feature will join the bottle body below it, which is crucial as we need to have one single body as we go to use the shell command. I'll now make the bottle hollow by activating the shell feature from the modify dropdown list. Then I'll select the top of the bottle and I'll type out three millimeters to create the thickness of the glass. Next, I'll click the OK button to confirm the shell command. Lastly, I'm going to add one more fillet to the top edge so it isn't sharp. I'll activate the model fillet command with the keyboard shortcut letter F as in Foxtrot. Then I'm going to select the top edge. I'll make the fillet radius two millimeters followed by clicking the OK button. And now we'll add a thread to the top of the bottle so our whiskey bottle can be sealed off with a cap. To create the thread, I'll select the thread command from the create dropdown menu. Then I'll click on the surface of the cylinder shape at the top of the bottle. In the thread dialog box, I'll first want to click the modeled option, which makes sure it actually 3D models the thread shape. Otherwise, it would simply just give a graphical appearance of the thread so if we didn't click modeled and we went to 3D print or export this file, then a thread would not actually be exported. The second option in our thread dialog box is the length. So it defaulted to be full length, but if I uncheck this, I can make it slightly shorter by dragging the arrow up or by changing the length input field. Lastly, if we take a look at the rest of the options here, they are standards for different types of threads, whether it be for bottles, screws, machinery, and so on. So for the purpose of this beginner demo, I'm simply going to leave it at the default settings and I'll click the OK button to confirm the results. Last but not least, I'll right click on the model and I'll select the appearance option from the list. I'll simply search glass in the search field Then I'll drag the bronze glass appearance onto the model. To take an even better look at the bottle, I'll change the environment under the display settings to dark sky, which will make the see-through appearance of the glass much easier to see. If you made it to the end of this video, then please let me know by commenting below if you found this revised version to be an improvement. Again, when working with the loft command, it's crucial that you snap your guide rails into all of the profiles. Otherwise, it's very likely that you'll get an error message. It's also super important that your guide rail is one continuous line. Otherwise, it also won't work and you'll receive an error. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. Please hit that thumbs up button below if you learned something in this video. Click on the video in the lower right hand corner to watch the next video in this series. Lastly, to join the Product Design Online community, 
be sure to hit that red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.